This is CBN News Watch. Vice President Mike Pence says the president of Turkey has agreed to a temporary ceasefire in Syria. He says it will be a pause in military operations while Kurdish fighters withdraw, followed by a permanent ceasefire. And Charlene Aaron is here now with more. We just learned this. This is very good news. Thank God, Heather. This comes after the vice president and secretary of state Mike Pompeo met with Turkish President Erdogan. The meeting between Pence and his Turkish counterpart comes after Erdogan previously refused to meet with him, but later changed his mind. The two men were seen greeting one another before meeting one-on-one. -on -one. The meeting lasted a little less than an hour and a half, and here's what the vice president said in a press conference afterwards about their agreement. Today, uh, I'm proud to report, thanks to the strong leadership of President Donald Trump and the strong relationship between President Erdogan and Turkey and the United States of America that today the United States and Turkey have agreed to a ceasefire in Syria. The Turkish side will pause Operation Peace Spring in order to allow for the withdrawal of YPG forces from the safe zone for 120 hours. As the bloodshed continues in northern Syria, Erdogan had repeatedly rejected the idea of a ceasefire in the past. And Turkey's week-long assault has created a new humanitarian crisis in Syria with 160,000 civilians displaced, many without basic needs like food and water. According to CNN, humanitarian relief groups, including very, very Doctors tough, Without Borders, Mercy, and Mercy other... Corps, and Save the Children, have evacuated staff from the area. The organizations say that they haven't stopped all operations but have cut back on their staff because of security concerns. Meanwhile, President Trump is standing by his decision to pull U.S. forces out of Syria and says it comes down to a land dispute that doesn't involve the United States. He also says he's fulfilling a campaign promise to bring American troops home. And CBN's Operation Blessing plans to continue working with the Barzani Charity Foundation to get vital food, water, and supplies to those in need. If you'd like to join the effort, you can donate to Operation Blessing's Disaster Relief Fund by calling 800-700-7000 or texting OB Refugee to 71777. Heather? Well, and that, of course, was uh, Lindsey Graham, yeah. who we saw there. Yeah. But it's incredible what uh, the vice president has done. Absolutely. A, a ceasefire for 120 days, if I'm not mistaken. And there's going to be more coming out. So I'm just, I'm just excited about what's happening. Well, right now, it seems really positive. Keep praying. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thanks, Charlene. You're well, President Trump, I'm sorry, CBN News contributor Chuck Holton is in Syria right now with the Free Burma Rangers to provide medical care to displaced people, soldiers, anyone who needs it. And we spoke with him by phone this morning about what he was seeing on the ground. So I'm in Taltafur, which is a, a town of about 15,000 families that's about 35 kilometers south of the Turkish border near uh, Ras al -Ain. And uh, that's, uh, that city has been taken over by the Turks, uh, surrounded by the Turks, not taken over. And uh, there's a tremendous amount of casualties, apparently, inside the city, but the Turks are not allowing them out. And when the, I'm at, at the hospital right now in Taltafa, which is the nearest casualty collection point to the, the fighting, uh, but they only have one patient in the hospital at the moment because... Every time they send a, an ambulance up to the north, it gets bombed by the Turks. So the Turks are, are actively bombing ambulances, which is a, a, a war crime, uh, as they try to get people out of that area. So they've been unable to get in, anybody out. So far, they have treated over 650 people since the fighting began at this casualty collection center where I'm, I'm standing. They're short on just about everything. Electricity, running water, food, medicines, uh, you name it. And part of the reason for that is that most of that, uh, those kinds of supplies used to come in from Turkey. Now that the border is closed, uh, the people in northern Syria here are really having a hard time meeting even their basic needs. Really incredible what's going on there. And on tonight's episode of The Global Lane, retired Special Forces Lieutenant Colonel Sargis Sangari weighs in on the Syrian conflict. Alliance is what we're seeing right now on open source, but they have struck this deal 
even before President Trump decided to pull the forces out. One of the problems that we had was we saw that they had already started reaching out to uh, Syria and brokering these deals, and also at the same time uh, uh, linking themselves to Iran. Uh, March of this past year, a video surfaced where the uh, Kurdish forces that we were supporting within uh, Syria uh, had actually brought Iranian intel officers uh, and had walked them through basically all of the basings which we had provided with U.S. taxpayer money to build for them. Uh, at the same time, um, they were pointing out all the disposition of all our core structures to the Iranians uh, on the battlefield and how we were arrayed in Syria. Uh, this is one of the reasons uh, the president, I think, has made the right decision to say, if he cannot trust you as a partner and an enduring partner, then why are we here? The only good that we were providing for the Kurds in Syria was uh, by us being there and by our soldiers dying on the battlefield, it was given an opportunity for them to try to establish their own regional government, which at the same time was suppressing all the other minorities that were in the region who are not socialists in ideology or mentality. And what about Assyrian Christians? I know they don't trust Erdogan, but they say they aren't much better off with the Kurds. No, they haven't been. Uh, the Assyrian Christians have suffered under the Kurds, uh, the Haber River Valley Basin, was cleared out when the Kurds decided to enter and chose out of the battlefield to fight against ISIS. And the Kurds, in support of the Turkish Ottomans, were the ones that killed and captured and took into slavery majority of those Assyrian women uh, during the first genocide. In 1933, the Kurds also aligned with the Iraqi Arab armies in order to be able to uh, push out and kill the Assyrian Christians who were in the uh, villages and the areas surrounding Semele. Unfortunately, when you have individuals who are just jockeying for political positioning and money and dollars, this will continue to happen within the region. And what now? What's the best course of action to end the Syrian war once and for all and keep Iran out? Well, Iran is there. Iran's been there for 40 years. Unfortunately, our Kurdish allies, to include Barzani and, uh, no and the Kurdish North, in one meeting, sold out all the Israeli um, um, uh, initial intercept positions that were built as far as uh, early warning for missile strikes from Iran against Israel to the Iranians. Uh, you cannot rely on these individuals. Iran uses that corridor, uh, which is the Kurdish regional government area, to move supplies, equipment, weapons uh, into um, areas within Syria and moves those into Lebanon and also into Syria where it puts pressure on Israel for its security uh, requirements. Uh, what we need to do is we need to finally make a long-term decision on how to address the minority issues in Iraq and Syria. And the only way you could do it, at least in Iraq, under the uh, current Iraqi constitutional structure, is to empower and give support for a Assyrian Christian uh, um, uh, uh, homeland, safe home, if you want to call it, or under the Iraqi constitution, it would even be a province, uh, regional government, in order to be able to pick up all the minorities that exist from various different groups uh, and allow them to be able to have a somewhat of a self-rule uh, capability. Once that happens, these minorities are much better capable of working with countries like Turkey, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and they become a stabilizing factor within those countries. As long as we continue to go down this path, of just literally uh, trying to put out fires, making one group happy over the other, uh, which are internal fights within the Kurdish uh, factions and tribal groups uh, against Turkey, you'll never be able to get a, to a final end goal. Our job is to make sure that we preserve the roots of Christianity and allow those individuals to finally have an opportunity to have a say in their own future. Okay, Sargas Ngari, thanks for those insights. You can hear more from Sargis Sangari, and you can watch Gary Lane's commentary on how Drag Queen Story Hour turned into a strip show at one public library. That's tonight on the Global Lane, only on the CBN News Channel at 9.30 Eastern. And in other news, there's been a breakthrough in negotiations over the United Kingdom's plan to leave the European Union. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the leaders of the European Commission both said they have reached an agreement. Johnson is headed to Brussels for a two-day summit to finalize the deal. He still faces a tough task getting it through his parliament. Opponents say they will work to block the deal. 
Johnson has promised to take the United Kingdom out of the EU by October 31st with or without an agreement. Well, here at home, Maryland Democratic Congressman Elijah Cummings has died due to complications from longstanding health challenges, his congressional office reports. He was 68. As chairman of the House Oversight and Reform Committee, he was a key figure in the impeachment inquiry into President Trump. Cummings was an active member of New Psalmist Baptist Church in Baltimore. Earlier this year, he spoke about faith as he ministered to Michael Cohen at the end of his testimony before the House Oversight Committee. Here's a highlight from that. You come saying I had made my mistakes, but now I want to change my life. Um, and you know, if we, if, if we um, as a nation did not give people an opportunity after they made mistakes to change their lives, um, a whole lot of people would not do, do very well. I don't know where you go from here. Mr. Cohen, I, I, I tell my, 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 my children, I say when bad things happen to you, do not ask the question, why did it happen to me? Ask the question, why did it happen for me? I don't know why this is happening for you. But it is my hope that a small part of it is for our country to be better. I know that this has been hard. I know that you face a lot. I know that you are worried about your family. But this is a part of your destiny. And hopefully, this portion of your destiny will lead to a better, a better, a better Michael Cohen, a better Donald Trump, a better United States of America, and a better world. And I mean that from the depths of my heart. When we're dancing with the angels, the question will be asked, in 2019, what did we do to make sure we kept our democracy intact? Did we stand on the sidelines and say nothing? Cummings served in the House for 23 years. And coming up, we will tell you how a new ministry is working to provide support for pregnant women. Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. I like your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary. Or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible. All in one place. The CBN Bible, available at CBN.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news, exclusive stories and programs, credible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN Newswatch because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. Pepper's Pizza Palace is donating pizza for everyone today. Wait, 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 wait. I have big plans today. Trust in God even when times are tough. He has a plan for your life. Hey, we're going to be late for the grand opening. My parents want me to help with this outreach thing, feeding the community. What am I supposed to do here? Superbook! Join the Superbook Club and get Superbook The Birth of Moses, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Pharaoh ordered all newborn Hebrew boys thrown into the Nile River, and I have a three-month-old brother. The Birth of Moses, yours for a gift of only $25. What will you do the next time the soldiers come? I do not know, but I trust God has a plan for all of us.
Superbook Club members free streaming for seasons one, two, and three is now available. Pro-life advocate Abby Johnson has a new ministry for pregnant women. It is called Loveline, and it provides immediate support for those in crisis. Abby joins us now. Abby, thanks so much for being here. Of course. Thanks for having me on. What was the motivation behind starting this new ministry? Well, I, I, you know, in the past 10 years, I've gotten a lot of calls from women, women who don't have pregnancy resource centers in their area, women who just simply don't know what resources are available to them. Uh, they don't even know the first step to take. And I feel like part of what we need to do in the pro-life movement is, is not just to help women who are currently pregnant, even though that is a, a huge focus of our mission, but to also help women who maybe are struggling. Maybe they're single moms. Um, maybe they're a very low income family and they just don't know what's available to them. And so we started getting a lot of emails and phone calls from women who were in crisis. Um, and, and so we wanted to provide an actual hotline for them. And we have gathered a lot of materials for women and we have people 24 hours a day who are willing to get on the phone with them and to plug them in to different resources that are available in their area. So it sounds like it's really going beyond just a woman in her pregnancy, you know, and really extending to any woman in crisis. Uh, is it just by phone? Is it online? How does it actually work? Yeah, so they can contact us. They can, uh, they can, sorry, they can contact us online. Um, they can also chat with us online. They can call our hotline. So there's a lot of different ways that they can get in touch with us. Um, but like I said, it is a 24-hour line. There is somebody answering it all the time. They can text with us. Um, but we have a lot of ways that they can get a hold of us just so that we can plug them into the right places. Hmm. It's interesting, and, and you mentioned this a minute ago, but how, how does your work interface with crisis pregnancy centers? It seems like there's kind of a patchwork quilt of support systems for women across the country. Yeah, so we definitely want to get women into pregnancy centers for that continuity of care. So, but a lot of women don't know about pregnancy centers in their area. A lot of women don't understand what pregnancy centers actually do and how they can help them. And so this is uh, a, a place where we can actually partner with the local pregnancy center and say, hey, we've got a gal, need you. We can pair them together and get this woman the resources that they need. So it's just, it's just another uh, another branch on the tree, right? People just all working together, um, unifying together to try to get women all of the help that they need. Hmm. It's, it sounds really beautiful. Have, have you had any uh, stories so far of helping women, uh, someone who's been able to connect here? Yeah, I mean, we've helped over 100 women so far just in the past, I would say, year and a half to two years, just doing it without an official ministry. Um, we've provided baby showers for women. We have helped pay rent. Um, so we have so many stories uh, of women that have been touched by the generosity of other people and who have been able to network with, with people in their area uh, who just want to help. And it's a great opportunity also for moms, stay-at-home moms, to get involved with women in their community who may need help. Just this week, we have a woman um, who's a stay-at-home mom of six children She's going to be connecting with a woman who's currently living in her car, who's homeless. And so we're going to be able to get her into a more stable situation. Mm, that's really beautiful. Abby, thanks for sharing about Loveline Ministry. Thank you so much. Up next, what has changed for religion in America and where evangelicals stand in society? When I came to Regent University, it's like the world opened up. I felt like I needed to advance my career and go back to school. Regent was a perfect fit for me. The Regent professors are world class. You are equipped. The focus of the faculty is on each individual student, whether it's online or in person. You become a part of Regent's family. You carry with you not just the content and the knowledge, but the confidence to understand that we can be significant in the world. Regent University. Follow your path. Nigerian Christians are Christians being slaughtered in Iran are routinely every day. arrested. Nepali Christians of their faith. continue to suffer. In times of trial and affliction, you need to know the truth. One of the fastest growing Christian populations in the world. 
Join Wendy Griffith and George Thomas for Christian World News. Young people are the ones who are open to the gospel. Powerful stories of suffering and hope that affect all Christians. Watch Christian World News, Saturday at 5 p.m. Get Protect Your Sleep and discover how to improve the quality of your life. A free DVD or booklet from the Christian Broadcasting Network. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Five leading experts help remove the obstacles between you and restorative sleep. When you don't get a restful night's sleep, you wake up with an accumulation of stress. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet today. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. You'll discover how food affects your sleep, how to put insomnia to rest, explore effective remedies for sleep apnea, and much more in Protect Your Sleep. Wake up to your best life and get Protect Your Sleep today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet. When it comes to faith in America right now, social scientists say that the so-called middle is actually declining, and what we have is more evangelicals and more people who are religiously unaffiliated, also known as nuns. Dr. Ryan Burge, a political scientist at Eastern Illinois University, recently commented on the trend, noting that those in the middle who are not born again or religiously unaffiliated has dropped to 35% of the population, down from 55% in 1988. And Dr. Burge joins us now. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Heather. Thanks for having me. Hey, so tell us, you tweeted uh, about this and said that people feel forced to pick a side. What did you mean by that? Yeah, so, I mean, if you look at the, if the graphs shows you clearly that the number of born-agains is actually up in America. It's gone up from 35% in 1988 to 41% today, while the nuns have gone from 7% in 1988 to almost 23% today. That means the middle has shrunk from 55% to 35%. And so there are a lot of traditions that used to sort be Christian, but not necessarily born again. There's a lot of Catholics, for instance. There's a lot of mainline Protestants, and those those uh, religious traditions are shrinking. So you're seeing things like more and more Catholics now say that they're born again. It was 14% of Catholics said they were born again in 1988, and now it's 28% of Catholics say they're born again. So really what's happening is the more born-again flavor of American Christianity has sort of infiltrated not just evangelical churches, but it's become part of, you know, mainline moderate churches, but also Catholic churches as well. Okay, and it also sounds like when you're talking about the decline of the middle that denominations are not as strong as they used to be. That's correct. So um, the mainline tradition, which are churches like the United uh, Church of Christ, the United Methodist Church, the Episcopal Church, the American Baptist Church, in 1976, they were the largest religious tradition in America. 30% of all adults in America were mainline Protestants in 1976. In 2018, only 10% of all American adults were mainline Protestants. So they dropped from 30% to 10% all in a span of about 40 years, while at the same time, evangelicals are basically the same size today as they were 30 years ago, and Catholics are basically the same size. But on the other side, the religiously unaffiliated have gone from 5% in 1976 to 23% in 2018. So we're seeing kind of a, a hollowing out of mainline or moderate Protestantism and a, and a rapid increase in the number of religiously unaffiliated Americans. Okay, and what can you tell us about these religiously unaffiliated? They're also known as nuns. Uh, like, who are they? What age group, uh, gender? Like, what do we know about them? Sure. So typically, um, the younger generation, every successive younger generation has been more religiously unaffiliated than the generation before them. So for instance, we know that Gen Z, which are people under the age of 25, about 40% of them identify as religiously unaffiliated, but the millennials, it's closer to 35%. So as you get older in generations, the number of religiously affiliated go down. What makes that tricky, though, is that we know, as a general rule, young people, when they kind of go to college, move away from their family and try to find themselves, will drift away from church. But then when they get maybe in their late 20s or early 30s, they get married, have a couple kids, 
They want their kids to have the same sort of moral foundation and religious tradition they did, so then they come back to church. So when you hear statistics that say 40% of Generation Z are religiously unaffiliated, we know that they're going to—some of them, at least, are going to drift back towards church as they move into their early 30s, but we can't tell or we can't predict how many, how often that's going to happen or how many of them are actually going to come back when they move into you know, middle age or adulthood. All right, a little bit of a silver lining there. Dr. Ryan Birch, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Heather. After the break, the latest achievement for Christian singer Lauren Daigle as she adds three more awards to her resume of success. Christians around the world are standing with the Israelis. But why? In CBN's free magazine, Friends of Israel, you'll discover why Christians are supporting the Jewish state how Israel is fulfilling prophecy as a light to the nations, and ways you can pray for the people of Israel. Israel needs the support of friends like you. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Friends of Israel. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, yes. Lord, into public school. Watch The Prayer Link, Tuesday nights at 6.30. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm going to teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series. Regents first ROTC graduate student. Well, Christian music artists celebrated this week at the 50th annual Gospel Music Association's Dove Award on Tuesday night. One big winner of the night was Grammy-winning singer Lauren Daigle. She began with six Dove nominations and won three Dove Awards for Pop Contemporary Album, Artist of the Year, and Song of the Year for her popular hit, You Say. In a Twitter post, she said it was an honor to win and wrote, it is incredible to see the impact of these songs and the album are having in people's lives and throughout our music community. And that is it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. We hope that you'll join us next time. Have a great day.